Hey everybody, my name is Jared and I am a Master Mason in the state of Mississippi in the United States of America. Today, showing off the Forget-Me-Not tie by Edgar over at Masonic Revival. Now I told you before that we were going to get into the charge for the initiation and here I'm just going to go through the charge so you can hear it as it's given in the state of Mississippi this is the entire thing there is nothing that is omitted it is all plain text in Mississippi uh, so I don't have to leave anything out and later uh, we will come back and dissect and evaluate all the different sections inside of the charge. So if you're interested for more of that study about what the charge means, then if you'll permit a little bit of self-advertising here, uh, please subscribe to the channel uh, and come back and check out that video. It will be a little while before it comes out, so I can't tell you when to come back. That said, the charge at initiation in the state of Mississippi is given like this as you are now introduced into the first principles of Freemasonry I congratulate you on being accepted into this ancient and honorable fraternity ancient as having existed from time immemorial and honorable as tending in every particular so to render all men who will be conformable to its precepts no institution was ever raised on a better principle or more solid foundation nor were ever more excellent rules or useful maxims laid down than are inculcated in the several Masonic lectures. The greatest and best of men in all ages have been encouragers and promoters of the art and have never deemed it derogatory to their dignity to level themselves with the fraternity, extend their privileges, and patronize their assemblies. There are three great duties which, as a Mason, you are charged to inculcate to God, your neighbor, and yourself. To God, in never mentioning his name except with that reverential awe which is due from a creature to his creator. To implore his aid in all your laudable undertakings, and to esteem him as the chief good. To your neighbor, in acting upon the square, and doing unto him as you wish he should do unto you, and to yourself, in avoiding all irregularity and intemperance which may impair your faculties or debase the dignity of your profession. A zealous attachment to these duties will ensure public and private esteem. In the state, you are to be a quiet and peaceful citizen, true to your government and just to your country. You are not to countenance disloyalty or rebellion, but patiently submit to legal authority and conform with cheerfulness to the government of the country in which you live. In your outward demeanor, be particularly careful to avoid censure or reproach. Although your frequent appearance at our regular meetings is earnestly solicited, yet it is not meant that masonry should interfere with your necessary vocations, for these are on no account to be neglected. Neither are you to suffer your zeal for the institution to lead you into argument with those who, through ignorance, may ridicule it. At your leisure hours, that you may improve in Masonic knowledge, you are to converse with well-informed brethren, who will always be as ready to give as you will be to receive instruction. If, in the circle of your acquaintance, you find a person desirous of being initiated into Freemasonry, be particularly attentive not to recommend him, unless you are convinced that he will conform to our rules, that the honor, glory, and reputation of the institution may be firmly established, and the world at large convinced of its good effects. Finally, keep sacred and inviolable the mysteries of the institution, as these are to distinguish you from the rest of the community and mark your consequence among Masons. So there we are, the Entered Apprentice or Initiation Charge in full. And now that that's there, you can, if you're not a Freemason, you can see something that, you know, what do we tell a Freemason, a newly made Mason? What do we tell him is his job? What is he supposed to do? How is he supposed to behave? And you can see so much of that here in the charge, but we'll dissect it a bit more in another series later in the future. 
I think that the charge is one of those things that is almost universal. And now I want you to prove me wrong. I'm sure that our good friends in Pennsylvania are going to tell me that the charge doesn't even sound like this at all. And I'm sure there's going to be a few jurisdictions that either have something else added or some things taken away. But I want to say that throughout the world, a very large number percentage is using this exact same charge. So now that I've said it, prove me wrong. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this series. Uh, if you're new to the channel, you're finding a video that is a part of a very long playlist sharing everything that is legal to be shared about the Entered Apprentice degree in the state of Mississippi, at least as it exists here in 2017. So if you just stumbled across this one video, come back to the channel and look for the playlist about the Entered Apprentice degree and you can learn as much as I can share with you all the way from the beginning. Thanks to all of you who've made the series worthwhile and we'll see you on your next step. Bye.